of the mind speak episode we have new speakers new subjects every day to make this lockdown more informative and a mind changer today we have prasad kapre who is going to speak to the fashion czar tarun telyani tarun has an amazing profile many may not be aware of he has a degree in management from the wharton school of business and an associate degree from the fashion institute of new york after returning from us he saw the vast potential in the fine clothing and couture industry that was evolving in the country in 1987 he opened the doors to india's first multi designer boutique ansam which was a sensation in mumbai and i am all for it because i live in mumbai <laughs> india modern was the guiding philosophy of tarun telyani studio founded in 1995 the studio creates a fusion of indian craftsmanship fine textiles with contemporary international chic tarun has mastered the art of making the best in couture fashion jewelry homes and even carpets when tarun launched his grand boutique in jan 2017 in new delhi at putta gardens on completion of this boutique tarun said when you walk into my space i want you to know you are entering my mind i think that was a great statement and makes us uh, open up our minds and hearts his garments are today sold in new york london tokyo hong kong dubai and across india tarun telyani is probably india's most established designer in terms of infrastructure distribution low and behold friends hold your breath still and we take uh, we see prasad take tarun on a journey to see how fashion and jewelry can blend well create new horizons and new ideas for us who only dwell in jewelry uh, we will have a question and answer at the end of the session kindly keep your mobiles and laptops on a video off mode for a better clarity for sound and picture i now request prasad to take over thank you ashok ji and good afternoon and welcome tarun to this thank you nice to be here yes uh tarun uh, just for your sake and for the audience sake uh, you know uh, i have divided this section uh, this, this whole conversation in primarily two different sections the first one is i want to draw a lot of parallel between fashion and jewelry and there is a lot the which is there is common between the two industries and how we can learn from each other especially you know the fact of the matter is that both fashion and uh, uh, jewelry perhaps started 5000 years ago you know so so they all started together but fashion of course has grown by leaps and bounds uh, and especially in the last 30 years so you know so which is which is something interesting so i want to draw a parallel that how uh, and what interesting points can be picked up from the fashion industry and second is if and when we want to collaborate with the fashion industry how can we do it together and how can we both prosper together so these are the two basic uh, sections with which we said uh, can you speak a little louder to uh, anything else one of the very Prasad, yeah. can you speak a little louder or uh, speaker to be near uh, to your uh, okay. voice okay uh is it is it any yeah, better? better better yes it is better okay so uh, you know as i was saying that uh, since we are drawing the parallel but before i get into any of those questions one of the very interesting question which uh, the audience have already sent me is how did you create your label tarun tehliani how did and what is the mantra behind the success of this uh, label and how do you sustain it well you know it's always been easy with the benefit of hindsight it's a lot of hard work and the truth is actually only now that i'm 25 30 years on am i sitting and thinking what do we need to do strategically where's the market at the time we started it was very nascent industry you know and people thought we were crazy i remember pearl padam see the director say you'll be coming back like a church mouse in 6 months you know because there's no way this concept can work and it didn't actually work in the beginning it took time but we were passionate and we had seen what happened in the world and we knew as being young 20 year olds ourselves mid 20s that there was a change you know our generation did not necessarily want to look like their mothers and fathers they had traveled the world they were a little more open to contemporary global fashion which also then they wanted with their indian fashion right 
you can't be Western and then suddenly go back into looking 30 years old. You understand fit. You understand what a jacket. So that was the guiding principle between behind the starting of Ensemble. We saw many beautiful things also, which I found shocking at that time, that were made in India but were only sold abroad. So you'd find beautifully made Indian things in London and Tokyo and New York. And this wasn't available and they'd say, well, it's only for export. And I'd say 45 years after independence, you're still standing there and giving your best product to the white man. And we Indians, if you remember, used to shop on fashion streets where all export rejects used to sell. Right. And even the, there was a textile industry, so there were beautiful stores for saris. Right. Besides that, exhibitions and sales happened. Like I talk about Bombay, all over breech candy. And women would rush in and try things over their clothes. You had to try a shalwar kameez on a shalwar kameez. Right. Men mostly got their clothes tailored. And it depended on the fit of whoever was tailoring it for you. So we were in a transition anyway from a textile industry, which is Indian's particular background, to now a tailored, more Western, more contemporary, more global for approach. Okay. And so that was one thing. We started the store and it took a long time to learn. I was very complex because I didn't know what a placket was. I didn't know how to fit something. And people assumed that I knew it. And very often they'd ask me something and I just have to be vague because I didn't know. I have an idea what they were talking about. So I decided to go and study because I felt that if you really wanted to know something, then you got to know technically what to do. You couldn't be explaining it to Indian Master G. So I went back to FIT and I studied for there, which was very intense. And in 95, I moved back and decided to be a designer full time. Okay. So I think there were many things that, you know, were happening because there was this whole, we were moving back away from socialism and then it opened up. And a lot of communities, particularly the diamond merchants, the good, uh, jewelers, all your Palanpuris used to come back. And they used to wear the most beautiful things at weddings. That's what really gave this Indian fashion a big Philippe. They wanted beautiful embroideries. It started going back to what they thought costumes of Royal India were. Because all this patronage had been lost under socialism. You know, the standards had come down. You know, you had to pretend. I mean, things were just kind of... It was not the Indian exuberance and spirit that developed. So I think once people saw that there was patronage, designers started pushing themselves further, embroidery, learning, cut, doing novel things. Right. And also it was very new for India. Like jewelry has been, we're one of the greatest jewelry manufacturers and most incredible tradition. But this form of fashion was new. And so we were pushed by a backwind or a tailwind, which came in the form of press. BBC used to come down regularly. There was excitement. If you were a jeweler who were doing beautiful things, well, you were one more jeweler. But right. we were just lucky. You know, sometimes you're at the right place at the right time. Okay. And basically, you know, this was a new, a, a new breeze. It was enthusiastic. It's very visual. It's right. extremely visual. So if you see a model on a ramp or someone beautifully dressed, you can't take your eyes off them. You know, I mean, it, it's 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 seductive, yeah. and it was nice to see things that fit beautifully. And a new language was being developed, you know. Mm -hmm. So all this was very exciting. When I think about jewelry, although we had a wonderful export market, there was beautiful things being done here in Jarao. I felt that, you know, a, a lot of jewelers, people would go to them and open a book and say, make me this Cartier, make me this, make me that. So while the workmanship was superb, that identity was not. Awesome. Sometimes go to 20 jewelers and the designs all look the same, you know. Correct. Or even now designers doing jewelry, they look like things I've been see, I've seen for yeah. 20 years. In, but even so, in jewelry industry, we find the same, you know, I mean, it's, it's very difficult to create a distinct identity. Well, and, and when you do, then it's also so easy to copy, you know, that people are copying you and that mm -hmm. takes away the value. Unless you stay, and of course, this is an extreme uh, example, but, you know, we've been friends for a long time and I've been seeing his work from the beginning when it was stainless steel. Someone like Viren Bhagat, who's so specific, specific cuts right. every stone, and for an identity has become a master. And it's so, it's so private, and it's so, uh, what should, what's the word I use? It, it's so precious that you can't even get to see it normally, and therefore it's difficult to copy. And so, you know, it has kept, it's, it's extremely exclusive, and it has a very strong look. Yes. But in general, with a lot of jewelers, and now they're younger jewelry designers, but a lot of jewelers, as I saw them, had wonderful workshops, but they did a bit of everything. You want the Gerard, they give you Gerard. You want diamonds, they give you diamonds. They have gold, gold section. They have vintage Victorian sections. So it became, it, it, almost within a brand, there was, it was like a multi-brand. 
Okay. And I think there's been no dearth of jewelers. I mean, there's a jeweler. Indians love jewelry. And let me tell you, Indians love jewelry. It will spend more on jewelry than on clothes. Back then, I was telling you the story of how in the 90s, when somebody would come to do a bridal, they'd bring their jewelry. The mother would bring on the grandmother and say, this is what she's going to wear. And we need to find something to match with this. Right. Today, when they come, I'll say, do you know what your jewelry? Oh, forget the jewelry. Outfits more important. The girls are more interested in the jewelry. In the clothes, then we'll find the jewelry. So in a way, clothing, I mean, look, when you get a bridal, whatever you spend, chances are most people aren't going to use it again. But the jewelry has an intrinsic value. And I presume what you buy for your wedding will be one of the most special sets that you own. You know, at least you, know, you might go on to buy anything else. And so that is also an investment. Mm -hmm. But it's turned. They want the stuff action. They feel that people are going to notice their clothing much more, which is true. And that has happened in the last 30 years. And I think one of the reasons fashion has become so visible right. because of the rise of fast fashion, okay. as opposed to jewelry, which has stayed fine and precious. Yeah, and but I'll just come to that, Tarun, because <clears throat> you know, uh, I know we uh, spoke about that yesterday. But just one uh, thing which I wanted to know is what is that mantra of your success? Is it the distinct, uh, you know, uh, uh, designs, or is there well, I think it's it's a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. One is you have to stay insecure because you keep pushing yourself. So even in this lockdown, mm -hmm. I don't know what budgets you're going to have. I'm sitting here working every day because I'm so scared what's going to happen after this <laughs> that I'm pushing myself to be better. So mm -hmm. insecurity always goes a long way. You have to keep finding the next thing. Okay. I think also you have to keep pushing. You know, I think that for people who become designers and who develop a, a, a point of view, you, you know, you, you have to, it's, it's not just a business. I mean, yes, I have to run a business, but I go to work driven by other considerations. And the most important thing is to create, to create something new, to have this thing. I have people who are constantly critical of me, so they're pushing me. And you're, you're, you're pushing yourself against your competition or whoever you perceive to be your competition. And then what your level of engagement is. So I'm always looking for, in fact, a lot of our embroideries are taken from jewelry because I find, you know, we were not such a racial country. Our embroideries were jewel-like. And then there were many different techniques. Okay. So I keep pushing myself. You have to keep contemporizing. You have to understand what people are looking for. Okay. As people are wearing more Western clothing, they want that fit. So we're trying to put that into our clothes all the time. We do all our fittings on fit models, like you know they do in France or America, the ateliers. We've yeah. taken the best of this, and we're trying to put in the best of this. Okay, Tarun, uh, a couple of requests. One is, uh, you know, if, if you can speak in Hindi, because a lot of people have been asking me uh, whether we can switch over to Hindi. Uh, okay, well, I, I'll have to speak a little le less then. But <laughs> <laughs> as long as logo ko samajh aaye thoda bahut koshish karenge mix mix kar liye ha yes mix mix kar lijiye to chalega jo mera agla sawal hai jo main samajhna chahta hu ki how do you define fashion do you know fashion is a very broad term bahut it's a very big term yeah koi ek definition nahi hai alag alag type ke fashion hote hain high fashion hota hai bridal fashion hota hai हर रोज का फैशन होता है और ये फास्ट फैशन जो शुरू हुआ पूरी दुनिया में ये सब बड़े ब्रांड जो आए जारा और मैंगो एंड आई सपोज इनके इक्विवेलेंट यहाँ वो रूल बी यू नो जो ऋतु कुमार लेबल बना रही है द लोअर ब्रांड्स और जो आदित्य बिरला ग्रुप के यू नो दे डू सम एलन सोली में भी सो ये फास्ट फैशन दैट पीपल बाय एंड दे कीप टर्निंग ये मतलब ये आता है जाता है हर ये एक वेस्टर्न कंस्ट्रक्ट है कि यहाँ पर फैशन बहुत बदलते रहेंगे तो आज इस साल हम यू नो बेल बॉटम पहनेंगे उसके बाद हम ट्रेन पाए और ये इन्होंने तरीका बनाया ज्यादा सेल करने के लिए डिपार्टमेंट स्टोर इट्स बिग इट्स अ बिग कंस्पिरसी टूगेदर इट वन थिंग कीप्स दील रनिंग ऑफ दर हमारे जो इंडियन फैशन में हुआ था कुछ बदलता नहीं था ये अभी नई बात है क्योंकि यू कुड वे योर ग्रैंड फादर्स होती कोई अपने यू नो नानी की लहंगा या साड़ी पहन सकते हैं इवन टुडे मे बी माप यू ऑल्टर अबेट विलायत में इट वाज नॉट लाइक दिस हमारे सौ सौ साल से एक ही फैशन था टेक्सटाइल एम्ब्रॉयडरी यू नो द फिनेस ऑफ व्हाट वाज डन टू द टेक्सटाइल राइट देन व्हेन द इस्लामिक पीपल केम इन थोड़ा ज्यादा वो शरारा कलीदार ये सब शुरू हुआ बिफोर दैट वाज मोस्टली टेक्सटाइल्स विद द हिंदूज 
then the british came in our agrazo ne tailoring jackets was sab ye la it was in there before or abhi now it's getting a global feel right so fashion is many different things like jewelry but i keep telling you wahan par you have accessories at the airport they think that's jewelry but that's fast fashion cheap just costume jewelry you have fine for jewelry uh or kuch aise brands have vilayat mein jaise chanel wo costume jewelry banate hai just they call it you know uh, it's just called it's a costume jewelry line right and then they do fine jewelry or fine bijou wo usi brand se wo asli diamonds wagera they have their own boutiques you know in paris and in some of the other places Jeez. so brands do everything there's fast fashion which is like where and keep changing and mix and match and then there's this serious so matlab fast fashion mein jo fashion jewelry aayegi and whereas kutur side pe perhaps hamari fine jewelry aayegi right bilkul kyunki matlab fast fashion ke sath you can wear real jewelry par zyada tar fashion jewelry pehnte hain aur usme kya hai ki belts mein hai handbag ke strap mein ji ab handbags do do teen teen panch panch lag ke ek handbag jata hai you know jiska right. koi kimti nahi hai it's half the value the moment you walk into the shop sure. but wo abhi fashion mein hai so dobara wo log sochte ki dur se mera handbag dekhega uspe ek logo hai agar i have a nice pair of earrings kisi ko pata nahi chalega aur problem ye ek aur cheez hai fashion uh, fashion jewelry mein ki aaj itne sare materials hai there so many materials you can buy cubic zircon uska setting sahi karo you can't tell the difference with real diamonds True. you get beautiful fake jewelry italians make the most amazing fake jewelry american aur wahan ka fashion ho gaya ki matlab costume jewelry is bhi bahut you it can be for thousands of dollars and it's considered fine style aa gaya wahan par itta they don't value ki iska keemat kya hai so they take the make the design those are different things right uh, uh tarun i mean i mean everything starts with primarily uh कि एक प्लानिंग हमें करनी पड़ती है और हमने हमेशा देखा है कि फैशन इंडस्ट्री में परहैप्स आज आप ऑलरेडी 2021 का समर कलेक्शन शायद आप प्लान कर रहे हो यू नो द योर प्लानिंग इज ऑलमोस्ट 12 मंथ्स इन एडवांस जो नॉर्मली हम ज्वेलरी इंडस्ट्री में नहीं देखते हैं तो व्हाट इज द प्रोसेस बिहाइंड इट मतलब कितनी ज्यादा प्लानिंग होती है वेल या और इसमें कंज्यूमर रिसर्च कितना होता है सो रिसर्च हमारे कुछ टीम्स होते हैं जो सिर्फ रिसर्च करते हैं सो जैसे प्रिंस डेवलपमेंट नए फैब्रिक्स क्या मोटिव इस्तेमाल करेंगे या क्या थीम रहेगा हम एस इंडियन डिजाइनर्स हम चार पांच महीने पहले शुरू करते हैं क्योंकि हमारे प्रोडक्शन इतने बड़े नहीं है पर विलायत में जब ये यू नो लाइक द बिग ब्रांड्स लाइक शनेल या यू नो कैलविन क्लाइन दे डू थाउजेंड मिलियंस ऑफ पीसेस या वो दे वर्क वन इन एडवांस बिकॉज दे हैव टू प्रोड्यूस द सैंपल सिक्स मंथ्स इन एडवांस वो ऑर्डर्स लिखते हैं तो जैसे अभी मार्च में उन्होंने सब फॉल विंटर का कलेक्शन दिखा दे हैव टू बी रेडी बाय फेब फॉर कॉस्टिंग सो द वर्क हैज टू स्टार्ट लास्ट इन नवंबर दिसंबर ताकि वो आज मेफी में तैयार हो सो दैट दे कैन शिप द स्टोर्स इन सितंबर और अगस्त दैट्स द साइकिल ओके बट मोर एंड मोर द साइकिल्स आर गेटिंग शॉर्टर 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 सो सारा सका सक्सेस ये है कि वो शोज देखेंगे मार्च में और वो सिर्फ कॉपी करते हैं चार हफ्ते के चार हफ्ते में वो मतलब फैब्रिक्स को मतलब दे हैव स्टैंडर्डाइज्ड फैब्रिक्स उसको नया फैशन करके दे पुट इनटू द शॉप डिजाइनर्स के पहले जिन्होंने ये डिजाइन किया है उनके पहले ज़ारा अंदर लगाएगा दैट्स व्हाई इट्स वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट क्लोथिंग कंपनीज इन द वर्ल्ड ये जो ट्रेंड्स आते हैं वो किस तरह से आते हैं क्योंकि इज इधर अ इंटरनेशनल बॉडी व्हिच डिसाइड द ट्रेंड्स या हर कंट्री और हर ब्रांड अपने ट्रेंड्स खुद देखता है वेल दूसरा ये जो ट्रेंड्स के बाद इसको इसको जो पूरा आपको एक थीम देके यू नो यू यू इंट्रोड्यूस एटलीस्ट फाइव और सिक्स थीम्स इन अ ईयर और इवन मोर हाउ डज दैट वर्क वेल यू सी द थिंग इज ओरिजिनली एवरी कंट्री हैड देयर ओन ट्रेंड्स अब जैसे दुनिया इज बिकमिंग मोर मोर ग्लोबल सो द इंडियन किड्स आर लुकिंग एट अमेरिकन टीवी एवरीडे सो दे माइट बी इन्फ्लुएंस्ड बाय अ यंग सिंगर दिस न्यू टीन सेंसेशन or you know it might be when david beckham was big they were influenced by soccer a lot right. there are different people respond to different things so there are always multiple trends going on okay so in fine so if in valentino's a very successful designer and they do beautiful things because that stuff is very much in fashion it might set a trend for a while there are different things that set trends no there are many trends that go on at one time some people like monochromatic there's the japanese style of trends there's maximalist so 
today's world, there are many trends that run at once, and designers decide what they want to do or what they, you know, I like jewelry, I like fine colors, so I'm a little more maximalist. So I'll always be on that trend. And within that, I try and set my own trends as I go along without being conscious. If things catch on popular imagination, then that becomes a trend. But that might work in India. It might not work abroad. I might see a beautiful jacket at a museum, right. at the Metropolitan Museum, in the show, show on gods and angels. You know, there's all the Byzantium motifs and Dolce Gabbana has done a beautiful jewel jacket. And we'll come back and do our own version based on you know, something in a Janta Alora, and that might become a trend there. So it's a constant wheel. It's a cycle. Right. There are also companies that put out trends and say that next year green will be the color based on research. So everyone, so the shoe company is doing green, the bag is doing green. So then when they buy clothes, they can buy things up and down. But I think up jo hua, yeah. but we're in the middle of a COVID crisis or it's a retail crash. Yeah. And yeah. Consciousness to Araki, it had just become too much. We're all running, buying, shopping, selling, dumping, 100 billion pieces of clothing are getting dumped. It's not sustainable. We're all right. paying the price. So I think now everyone's talking about a new way of going back to an old fashioned way of buying less, but buying more quality, not defining yourself by wearing new things every day, at least which a lot of women do. Men don't shop like that. Right. And, you know, being more conscious of what you buy and buy better. Okay, but, that, but the fact is, you know, every every designer usually ends up having maybe, you know, at least six collections or even more. Jo in jewelry industry mein bahut rarely hota hai. Hamare agar saal mein do collections bhi aagaye, nahi, to we feel very good about it. Whereas fashion mein bahut zyada aate hain. To ye aap kaise manage karte hain? And iski kya zarurat padti hai? You know, ye iski zarurat sirf ye hai ki thoda newness banane ke liye. Do kisam ke fashion company hote hain. Uh, let's say let's say take Chanel because everybody knows it. They do tweed jackets. Right. If they're the same tweed jacket after three years, one say, why do I need to buy it? But if I say, okay, today the theme is the moon and tomorrow is this, I put the buttons, change the color. You create newness. Right. Right. excitement excitement. Okay. That's what fashion is. What's the new thing? Right. Okay. But also, you know, it's also f- fuels your creativity. You can mix a jacket from today with jeans from three years back. It's not that they're all in isolation. Right. In India, people look forward to new things because now there are young girls who dress very differently. There are older women who dress differently. There's a lot of fashion for weddings because that's when we celebrate India. You right. know, and there are different kinds of fashion for all the different events. So there's a lot of things going on at any different time. There are many different tastes. There are many different aesthetics. And this all exists in this universe. I think with jewelry, with the really fine jewelers, you yeah. have to have a certain stone or in the designs I presume are made about around beautiful stones or special things that you collect and then you design around it, a suite of emeralds, you put whatever it is. Right. It's not so possible to keep duplicating in fashion. If you want 1,000 pieces, you can make 1,000 pieces. If you want 500,000 pieces, you can make 500,000. Maybe in jewelry, you can only do that with a small ring, but not with a big necklace. That's one. I think it would be really useful actually in today's world because of social media and planning that when say the designers are designing the new collection, July, August, mein jo hota hai bridal ke liye, agar pehle se tab hota, you have a tab with great jewelers and that you start work six months in advance. So when you produce this look, you produce right. the jewelry, the whole ensemble, people Correct. love that. People are so confused with so much choice. Right. They want to be told that this will go, this option hai. Not to be forced, but right. just to be suggested. And when you shoot it together, you say, look how beautiful this looks. They love it, right? Because it makes it... People are also confused. There's too much choice. There's too much going on today, you know? Correct. And people are busy. There's too much social media. Everyone's working. So I think if people were to tie up what the department store was before, because department store was the main avenue distribution ke liye tha jab tak ye you know 10 15 saal mein now is going online and all but still the department store if you go to london still harvey nichols or harrods are very important in this whole chain self register so they would work 6 to 8 months in advance and they would make things coordinate so jab right. wo department store mein naya collection dalte you will find matching shoes you will find it always helps everybody True. because people you know then have 
uh, kind of it's edited for them. In India, everybody does their own thing. So there's no cohesion. There's no coordination. Actually, I find us, even within the fashion designers, one of the worst communities at Working Advanced. Milan mm-hmm. Fashion Week is so strong because every Italian shows there. Right. French Fashion Week was everywhere. In India, there'll be 10 Fashion Weeks. There'll be 10 this. Finally, it dissipates everything. Press ko bhi fatigue ho jata. Kis mein jai? I mean, five years back, we used to say, another Fashion Week because they don't understand. Right. Right. So we, by not working together, we hurt ourselves. Also, I think another problem in India is there are no barriers to entry. So anyone can copy. They make cheap copies. There is no body to, you know, protect IPR. So people are scared. And when I go to the jewelry fest, like that big thing that happens in Goregaon, yeah. I can't even walk through. I'm dazed. And there's a lot of beautiful stuff there. A lot of amazing things. Sure. But there's no storytelling. There's no emotion. It just becomes product. Correct. What we have to love... My next question was to understand the consumer motivation and what is that story, you know, because finally uh, we, we are selling a story more than a product, uh, both in, the, in fashion as well as in jewelry. So, how can this happen? So, if you are selling a product, you are selling a product, then you have to sell on price. If you are selling a product, you are selling a product, you know, it becomes yeah. price. In fashion, in anything fine, and there are many beautiful things. Our Karigari in India is outstanding. I mean, I think we're some of the best right. craftsmen in the world. Right. But what's the story behind it? Everyone now, or is the mein, iske baad, it is going to be even more important because everyone is looking. They've, everything is full. The people are buying jewelry, don't need another piece of jewelry. They don't need another piece of clothing. There'll be new people in the market, but you know, everyone has enough. They have to buy into something authentic into something that either moves them emotionally or feels like, wow, it's really some great artist's work or I'm helping a whole community. Many right. different reasons why people buy, right? It right. will also be that I want to look beautiful. Nothing wrong with that. Or it could even be that I want to wear the biggest necklace in the room. I want to wear the... It's all... There are many different emotions. But when they do that, that storytelling, it has to be a little slow. So with this fashion, it's a little bigger. You can do it. You tell the story on the ramp. You tell it on Instagram. Kai matlab outlets hai. Apne store windows mein banate ho. But when you do just jewelry, because the product's not smaller, yeah, it's a little more difficult for any product to on its own command that thing, you know. So let's say Bulgari will still put hundreds of photographs of Elizabeth Taylor wearing their stuff. Right. Because that was the big thing, you know, that, that she wore it and she bought it. Right. So everyone has to find their story. The best story, of course, is that it's a beautiful design and one drives it. Right. It could be about the stones. It could be at the craftsman. It's hard to make up a story if you don't have a story. Then people hire PR companies, but people are not fools today. So mm-hmm. they want an authentic story. Whatever it is that drives you, that's right. your story. There's no right or wrong. And it'll work for some and it won't work for some. And that's fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, one thing which I have noticed is most of the designers, the first thing that they do is try and go global. And which, again, we don't find this trend in jewelry industry. You know, uh, there are very few global brands, uh, if you really uh, think. As against that, I mean, other than Pandora or, or, or uh, you know, uh, some of the other bigger, bigger names. But in, in, in fashion, we immediately find that people want to go global. Is, they might want to go global. That? Well, there's a, they might want to go global, but let me tell you, your jewelry industry is way bigger than all the designers put together. Don't knock it. Fantastic. You're, you're, Fantastic. you're produced for the top brands. Yeah. I know from Harry Winston to Fred Siegel, everyone's getting stuff made by all the top jewelers here. Yeah. You'll do amazing diamond exports. You'll do semi-precious stones. There's a lot of fast fashion out of India, but the designer is minuscule compared to what you jewelers do. So please yeah. don't knock yourself. You're in a different league, okay? Honestly, there's a lot of hype around the designer and fashion, but yeah. you're way bigger. Okay. You know, I think to go global, how many Indian designers have gone global? We're mostly selling to the Indian customer abroad. It's not that right. we're selling to the global. Or right. we do little collaborations. That's not called being glo- called global. Global is like a Ralph Lauren. Whoever will advise you across the world. No one is close to that from here at all. Right. I think we Indian designers have to go global to the, lo- to the desis, to the mm-hmm. subcontinental people, and maybe a bit to the Middle East. 
it's too big a market. We only can do anything once we're strong here. You jewelers have focused on being suppliers, maybe polished stones, setting. Now, when you all want to create your own brand, then yeah. it's a different story, right? So, again, my friend Viren is very small, but he has a very top niche. He's considered one of the top jewelers in the world. Yes. And it is beautiful what he does. It's exquisite. And it's for people with a certain iron budget. I'm sure there are many people who can find their own way along the way. I think it's okay not to be global. I think you go become national at least. That national is a huge market. I mean, right. look at what companies like Tanish do. So I think this mentality that we have to go global, forget it. My whole strategy now is to, my name is known by every Indian. Should I sell to them or run into new markets and break my head? Okay. And I also understand what the need is. Italian okay. taste is different. Greek taste is different. Americans might like solitaires, but their taste might be different. We understand who we are. So I right. think the best design happens when you design for a lifestyle. So okay. going back to your question, ki aapka story kya hai? I was one of the first designers who showed in Milan. It was great. Then mm -hmm. we came to winter. We didn't have the fabrics. I didn't know what they did. How much could I design sitting in Delhi? But I know, even if you're sitting in Bombay, or in Coimbatore, or in Chennai, in December, in January, I know the lifestyle, what would we need. Design right. has to come out of a need. And right. it has to be matched with an aesthetic. And then it has to be matched with workmanship. And then you have to be at the right price. And there are many factors in it. But right. to start with, if I don't understand who my customer is, how right. am I going to, my, to... And today, Prasad, as never before, the customer is the most important thing. We have to all listen. Those days are gone where you had a name and people were lined up at the door. There's too much competition and people do things fantastically. True. And at every level in anything. Look at our service in India, in hotels, in airlines. We used to fly for 30,000 rupees. Now you get a seat for 4,000 rupees. Always on time, efficient, clean. That's Correct. the nature of the world. Right. So we really have to start. I always say start with, you know, even today I'm designing this collection. And I'm thinking about कि इस पैंडेमिक के बाद किस तरह के कपड़े पहनेंगे मेरे हिसाब से थोड़ा लाइट पहनेंगे ये हजारों लोगों की शादी नहीं अलाव होगा एक साल के लिए इवन द क्लोथ शुड बी लाइटर बट दे विल बी फाइन खूबसूरत चीज तो खरीदेंगे अभी से मैं उनको समझाऊंगा कि लहंगे के साथ तीन पीस कैसे बना सकते हो इसके साथ शर्ट पहनो इसके साथ चोली के साथ मैं क्यों सारी एंटिसिपेट नीड्स बिकॉज़ इट हेल्प्स अस टू कनेक्ट एंड व्हेन यू कनेक्ट देन यू हैव अ कस्टमर बेस ओके uh as i said when when you have you know six to seven new collections coming in in a year on in fact some brands do maybe every month so they come out with 12 different the themes uh what it requires is efficiency in your supply chain to aapka jo product development period hai wo how quickly can you turn around kitni jaldi aapko ye bana sakte hain kitni time time lagta hai so you must understand it's not ki hum pura product badal rahe hain As a, think of it this way that we're changing. I mean, the lenga is a lenga, but maybe one day I have a Byzantine theme. Agle baar it's Mughal. Third day it's Tanjore. So a lot of it is decorative. Uske upper jo ham laga rahe. Angootia, angootia. Today you might be doing pearls. Tomorrow you might be doing emerald with pearls. Right. So that supply chain is there. It's okay. not as if koi bilkul naya technique ya technology. You know, it's not like in tech. True. We're doing clothes. We're doing things. We're doing suits. Fabric suppliers, they show their stuff. Embroidery swatches, they show their stuff. Some embroidery, some patterns, they use. Some new ones are for newness. And we're watching the market and trying to connect and anticipate people's needs and lead them by evolution, not by revolution. If you look at Gucci, it's the most successful brand right now. When hmm. that last director was fired, in five days, they made men's wear, women's wear, men. You know, he put them on the men's wear, on the men and the men. Now today, in today's world, there are a lot of men who wear anything. So he just hit the a trend at the right time. You know, by luck. And now right. it's like a mad show. But if you look at the pieces, they all look like old things, but they're just put in a new way. A lot of fashion today right. is remixing. It's not like the old days where women and men sat and spent hours dressing up. A bride will do that. Us amana nikal gaya. People don't have time. So, so much of it is just communicating an idea, showing right. it in a new way. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I see a classic, beautiful design of a necklace, it's beautiful even today. I mean, some of the things in the Nizam's book or in all the old 
<coughs> jewelry collections, whether European or Indian. Right. Is it? But if you say it's better in 1930, it might be boring. But if you show it in a new way, on a little black dress, or as a woman would wear it today with messy hair and all, it looks new. It's not that everything has to change. Right. You have to communicate. But normally, it's time so period, kitna lagta hai? from your planning stage to actually the product being ready, how, how large is that cycle? Yeah, sampling is 3 4 5 mahine lagte hai. Samples oh. tayar karne ke liye. Okay. Because we're also doing other things, not ki ye day and night kar rahe hai. Aur uske baad orders place karne ke baad jab sab stores aayenge, to teen, you know, three, three and a half months to get it shipped to the stores. So the whole cycle is six to eight months? By the time Easily, it reaches yeah, store? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And abroad to ek saal ka cycle hai. Yeah. Wow. Our quantities are smaller and we do everything in-house in our own factories. Agar hum ko bahar outsource production dena tha, to hum ko aur bhi time dena padega. Or, you know, like Europe shuts in August, so the shipments right. have to go in July. All this happens. So, I mean, if you have a whole cycle, if you have a whole new collection in the whole year, introduce karne hai, so you have to plan maybe 12 to 18 months in advance. Well, I'd say about 12 months because some things will flow over and these are some best-selling best styles, so we'll do it in a new color. So yeah. it's not that every piece is new, right? Okay. You'll take the umbrella of the collection and give it a, a total freshness. from could be from a pattern or color palette, but you'll right. also do things that basically you buy your classics. You know, how you go back to a store, and whatever you want, you want the same thing, at least with men. You want True. that same thing before, so... It's a bit of both, always. Okay. So coming to the distribution part of it, now there are, you know, uh, mono-brand stores, multi-brand stores, there is online, there are departmental stores. Uh, which one really works well? And how do you decide how you want to go about? Well, for us, because we're at a very high level of fashion and it's very fit-specific, or uh, you can also order... It always works best for us in our own stores because you create your universe. Right. So just a minute, you come into Delhi here now in Sudhiri. You come in, you come into our minds. So you see the jollies, the whole atmosphere, the fragrance in the store. You you get immersed in a world. Right. So that always works the best, as opposed to going into a department store. But we don't have department stores that carry designers in India. But let's say if you go to the big multi-brand boutiques like an Ensemble or an Ogan or whatever, well, they'll have many different designer species there. So you don't create that whole cohesive world that has its own charm. And there are a lot of people who like to go there to shop because they get more variety and choice. Right. So that's fine too. But with a brand like ours, we do better in our own stores. But do you think there is a scope? Uh, sorry. Uh, do you think there is a scope for jewelry to have a multi-brand outlet? I mean, usually you may have Tanish as just one store, but can there be a multi-brand outlet which stocks Tanish, which stocks, uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe Kalyan, which stocks pieces of Malabar? I mean, you, you know, so, so, so the idea of a multi-brand store normally abroad is that somebody's eye is curating for a certain kind of customer. It's okay. not trying to be everything to everybody. So if you walk into Bogdorf Goodman, you will find a lot of beautiful jewelry on the ground floor, but coordinated by their, that, that Linda lady or whoever, they're, they're choosing what's in that store for their customer. It's right. really about knowing your customer. Just putting 20 brands into a store, I don't think that today works. That was, it worked at one point, but now things have got much more specialized. There's much more social media engagement. Before people come shopping, they're looking at things. They have an idea what they want. So right. part of it is just the tactile thing. I mean, it works for very expensive watches. Why would it not work for jewelry? Now, the problem is who's going to make that investment? That's the problem I see with jewelry. If it's your jewelry, you'll make the investment. But right. are you going to give your multi-million dollar necklaces and put them in someone else's store? You'd rather keep them with yourself. So up to a point, I think it works. That's why in all these department stores, you have very nice accessories and jewelry department. But the really fine jewelry will normally be done by the jeweler himself or the brand. Right. Oh, there are some brands that they'll sell it under their name. Because I know a lot of Indian, uh, they are, the diamond manufacturers manufacture for a lot of these top brands. So obviously the jewelry is selling under their name. Right. Um, and people like that. They like the story. So if people are going to go back to story, that will still work. Will a multi-brand jewelry store work or not? I, personally, I'm not the person to ask. 
I think the multi-brand works at a slightly lower level or a little more mass. So it'll work in perfume, it'll work in clothes, but still okay. for the really top end bridal, they'd rather go to the original boutique. Okay. Even in clothes. In, in fact, I know quite a few retailers who jewelry ke saath, apparels bhi rakhna chahte hain, you know, because that yes. seems to be the new trend because then it gives a complete look to the store. And, and yeah, and normally people who are wearing the jewelry yeah. need a certain kind of clothes. But again, it'll work better agar wo retailers ke paas, they have somebody who's buying with an eye. Ki right. iske saad ye ja sakte, iske saad ye ja sakte. Not right. ki ye kapde aur ye jewelry hai, to uska matlab nahi hai. Then they can go to the next shop. Right. And it's styled beautifully that you're doing looks, then you're taking the role of a stylist, which the jeweler right. might not be able to, but they have to hire that service. Okay. And that's what gives it value. Otherwise, what? You're just putting merchandise. You have to say. Hi, Tarun. Hello? Oops. Okay. Looks ah. like Tarun, Tarun has some issue. Yeah, I think cut gear. Kya beach mein? Nee, nee, nee. Uh, still his screen is showing, uh, but uh, there might be some uh, network issue with him. Nee, screen bhi chala gaya. Mere, mere yaan to screen. Aa jayega wapas. Wo aa jayenge. Mere khayal se he will come back. Okay. Are there any questions from the audience which you think we need to look into? Uh, there we still have time for questions. Bohat time hai. Uh, I'm making a note. One or two questions. Achha, I have thiga, thiga, thiga. Yeah. Haan, because have half an hour. Hai. We still have half an hour. Yeah, yeah. No, no. So, I just want to yeah. make sure that at least. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hello? No, 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 but uh, we can't neither see you or we can't even hear you. Yeah, just reconnect now, please. Okay, thanks. He went out of battery, so he's just uh, reconnecting again. Okay, okay. Is that working now? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Welcome back. Yes. Apologies. Yeah. My apologies. Not a problem at all. Right. So we were talking about yeah. the fact that, you know, if someone curates a collection and does right. it beautifully, then I think the person who comes to buy from that jeweler, see in India, people also buy from jewelers because they have a personal connection. Right? There's okay. a lot of trust. But right. obviously, brands like Tanish have broken that. Right. Uh, because they're selling, you know, in a different kind of trust because of the brand, or mother brand. But they're also not going to jewels which are cross, like you know, other jeweler might go to. So they go up to a certain point. So if it's beautifully curated and it's styled and it's sold as such, I don't think people will have a problem. However, today young girls, are, everyone's on technology. Technology is also confusing people because right. A, you can't tell the quality on technology of it. And people see so much that they get confused Then they want to go everywhere. Then they get more confused. And you sure. have seen it often with young girls. They don't wear these clothes, so they're even more confused, but they don't want their mother to decide. It's just chaos. Before, yes. 20 years back, mothers used to decide. Right. Before that, grandmothers used to decide. It was around the jewelry. And these were people who had bought Indian clothes for life. Today, the girls come in shorts. They're buying a lehenga. But the mother is saying, wear this jewelry. Someone else is saying, wear this. They're very confused. They right. really had a bad time. So if a store became, through having a great buyer, 
who combine the jewelry and the thing, I think it would be fantastic. It's wonderful for NRIs. It's right. wonderful for, you know, Arabs who come to India and a lot of Indians would be happy with the service because today people don't have the confidence. There's too much choice what to put with each but, other. Tarun, we want to understand ki ye hoga kaise because kafi sare designers bhi jewelers ke type karna chahte hain jewelers bhi designers ke sath type karna chahte hain but ye aage baat nikalti nahi hai matlab hoti nahi hai so how do how do we actually come together any suggestions any anything that uh... well i think i think now that you mention it i think a good thing would be for me to talk to the fashion design council of india okay yes. the fcc i'm making a note right now and tell them that listen if we can coordinate with a top body and then organize a one day meet and greet where everybody Fantastic. comes together right yes. jewelers maybe designers put up images or some images of their stuff jewelers bring some kind of thing like you would do at a trade fair abroad purely it's yes. not for transaction it's exactly. to bring designers and jewelry brands or jewelry manufacturers whatever you want to call it into Correct. the room and say who would work together who could work together arrange right. marriages at least to start a discussion huh? right in fact, we'll be more than happy if, if we can, you know, do that with, with the FDCI and, you know, we have large associations like GJC and, you know, GJPC. So we can actually collaborate together and do this because I think that's a great opportunity for both yeah, these. You uh, know, so I, I come once a year, I came because I've been working with different people on and off. I saw right. that jewelry fair, uh, which you have in Goregaon. Yes. It, it can only be called mind boggling, the length and breadth of material, right? Yes. But also, jewelers will have to be a little patient when they work with designers because I think everyone thinks the designer market is much bigger than it is. Right. But it is a growing market. And it one is. has to have a strategy and present things together cohesively. So right. I think the first thing is for people to meet each other and talk and see. Because, you know, yes, if you have nice jewelry, in the let's say the designers work on the jewelry a bit with the jeweler. So it's not just random, not putting just random pieces. Right. Frankly, if you put jewelry in the designer stores, if they're beautiful stores, and it's well marketed with professionals standing behind the counter who understand, who can tell them about the weight, about the stones, you know, in some cases, the, the gold is hallmark, all the things that people look for to feel safe. Right. There's no reason why they won't buy. They will buy. They will buy it from here. Because right. people are tired of running around. And now with this, all this social distancing and all, people are going to be more concerned about just roaming around. That roaming around is going to stop. They're going to go to a few or fewer places. They're going to go where protocols are, you know, fixed. Marketing is a very important part of it. Social media is a very important part of it. Telling right. the story constantly. Right. And connecting authentically, you know. In this really now, you know, we've come, we've re-entered the age where it has to be authentic. Right. So, but Tarun, I'll be actually chasing you for this because it's a brilliant idea to get to work with the FDCI. And you know, I'm very happy to organize it. Yeah. And I'm telling you right now, everyone's scared. Everybody will be very receptive to exploring new ideas and initiatives. Yes. What exactly. is this? It's an initiative. No one's being forced to do anything. Yeah. To connect two people. So maybe six or 12 or 15 designers work with different jewelers and something right. new is created. Because it is the way forward, you know. It is the way it forward. It is the way forward. Frankly, yes. I tell you, with Western clothes, people are wearing less and less jewelry. Maybe right. a nice pair of earrings. Yeah. They'll wear this young jeweler, Hanut Singh, beautiful things, modern, contemporary. Right. Where are Indians really wearing all their fine jewelry? With Indian clothing, around the wedding, around the big Indian celebration. Now, even at if you go to a destination of 50th birthday party, whatever, not much jewelry. Mm -hmm. It's all more Western. Right. But around the wedding and it's where the most beautiful jewels are being worn. Oh, of course, they'll buy their solitaires and their big rings and that sort of thing. So for that, you don't really need to collaborate with designers. You need more for the big designs and things that right. will work with the bridal and the other clothing. If you're right. selling a beautiful solitaire stone, you don't need to be with the designer. You should do that on your own. You know, the classic right. Harry Winston designer, whatever you call it. Right, right. So... Uh, you know, so I have right and I'll, I'll put you all on the mail yes. with the FTCI. And as soon as this lockdown ends and let two, three weeks go, because people will take time to settle it. Sure. And, you know, we can certainly arrange a, a meeting and we can have one or two Zoom meetings before with whoever you want and Mr. Sage sure. and two, sure. three members of the board to make it worthwhile and then go forward. Yeah. It's That's a very brilliant. Good idea. 
that's yeah. a very, next year very... in mumbai uh, post the lockdown uh, i would love to meet and maybe you know we, we all meet together with the association no, no, as well absolutely i am sure most of you are based in bombay yeah 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 so i i i come most of the designers are in delhi but they're in both cities so like i think manish malhotra has tied up with somebody called rani wala right. and this you know so like that there's a lot of opportunity okay okay super uh coming to the branding and marketing now one of the key things that we have always seen is a lot of fashion designers come into uh, jewelry designing but i haven't seen jewelry designing getting into fashion designing is, well is, i tell you jewelry designs fashion designs much more difficult than jewelry design let me tell you okay. it's a whole different skill you can't rely on a thing and right. jewelry the values are much higher sure and i think like i said contrary to what you all think right. all the people doing jewelry are doing much bigger businesses it's not doesn't have the hype of fashion right so there's no reason why you also get into fashion Okay. Once you're a jeweler, you don't want to see the things that sell for less than a certain amount. <laughs> in fashion, the irony is, you know, very, they say, very nicely in the uh, stop the competition from the jewelry side in uh, fashion. <laughs> they say collaborate. Uh, you know what they say in, uh, on Seventh Avenue: you sell to the masses, eat with the classes. The problem is that all the Indian fashion designers are only selling to the classes, but you all sell up and down from the one thing to the up. So. and i know how much you all export so it's a different market right but again tarun again it is also you're, true are... it is also true to interrupt for one second yeah. that's over the last few years just as a lay person i'm seeing less and less jewelry worn even at weddings i'm seeing either they're wearing that big bib or right. they're wearing more delicate to find things so there's two tastes maybe in north india they wear these big things but in general i'm seeing less and less jewelry it's about clothes it's about bag they will spend a lakh and a half on a pair of shoes which i don't understand you know when you can get a nice pair of earrings but that's what's in fashion right now you know it's a different right. world okay okay but you know again it, uh, when it comes to marketing i think again fashion industry is is way ahead of uh, jewelry industry example even the designers there are so many different labels of the fashion designing and designers which have gone global not only just gone global but there are really big names whereas in jewelry you hardly find any you know there are a handful of them why but why again the uh, and, and what fashion, what's your suggestion for the jewelry industry well i think that so so fashion is a much much more visual thing you know and if i even put even if i take a polkari and make a coat and put it with a pair of shorts and cool shoes that image can go global but there's very little you see a lot of the indian jewelry much as it's beautiful they're not interested in it in the west it's too big it's too much for them right it's not their taste okay. they wear more fine stones or sophisticated colors the italians the french the americans they'll wear one piece their style of wearing jewelry is totally different they will wear much better stones they won't right. compromise on the stones you know that quality i mean i've seen with the top american socialites that it's flawless what they wear so it's different and how do you put it so i remember many years back i think maybe you know i don't remember who one of the brands maybe it's rashmi mehta and they brought this jewelry show to delhi and they got these havi leger dresses because they're simple tight dresses and the models wore them and walked up in them with very nice diamond necklaces right that same show if it was done with cheap indian clothes and costume jewelry is hard to have that impact from a visual marketing you know right you can do it through advertising you can do it through thing like even with chanel why do people know chanel jewelry because they mix it on the clothes the pearl chains they're always selling the story they're selling a, a strand of costume pearls swarovski pearls for 1500 dollars it's the power of that brand you can get real pearls for that price you know we discussed this also yeah let people want that double c why do you think so many italian brands why do you think today like todd or louis these are all people doing shoes why have they all started doing fashion shows even louis vuitton was just bags mm-hmm. then they understood how do we get the bags onto a global view they started doing the fashion show they don't care about the clothes but every model comes with that bag and that image goes global so when you're just doing jewelry it's very hard to take an image that goes up because you can shoot beautiful images and you can advertise which is what most jewelers do right 
it doesn't, you know, if you see the red carpet where everyone's lending jewelry and all, they'll right. ask, but we finally we only remember the dresses because the dress is big and dramatic and, you know, it's just the reality. And I think that also today for special occasions, people, I mean, because they're selling to the rich, they want more and more special and beautiful things. That's why the top jewelers continue to sell, you know. Right. And I think somehow to brand a point of view, a design like Lala Yunus, we still remember the goal from Greece, you know, or like I gave the example of Viren. So I think there needs to be the creation of identity. I feel with a lot of Indian jewelers, they do beautiful things, but you can't tell one from another. That's hard to create that identity then. Okay. Yeah, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you, you specialize in more on the bridal segment and uh, there is enough competition out there. So what is that? Uh, I mean, how do you keep it distinct and how do you keep that differentiation factor alive? Well, I, I want to tell you that even here it's becoming difficult because there's so many layers of copying and it's becoming very blurred because there's so much. I think you have to do it in an overall aesthetic. We are now beginning to brand in different ways. So we were, we're getting Swarovski to do special crystals with the TH. So even of a sari blouse, it'll hang. So it's not in your face, but you'll be able to see it. Right. You know, it's a code that you can read. So little, little subtle things like that we're doing. And we, we have a certain fit and drape. You know, somebody like Manish Walotra might have his own look. Rohit Bal has their own look. And we don't, we're all in their own, you know, doing our own thing. Mm -hmm. So I think over years that identity has evolved. I think it's also possible with jewelry, but then the, these brands have to have that designer who drives that. Sure. You know, everyone, you might be a wonderful manufacturing company, but like all the design houses abroad, you might need to hire that designer to be the star and take it through. I remember having dinner at, you know, Yves Carcel's house in Paris. He was the president of Louis Vuitton at that time. And they were just launching their fine jewelry collection. And that right. jeweler was sitting there at dinner and they were doing all these things with these stars, some kind of thing that looked like the galaxies. But it's right. not my taste at all. But they hire a designer to come on, like Chanel had, you know, Karl Lagerfeld or Fendi had Lagerfeld. All the big houses abroad have proper hired fantastic designers. They sure. you need a designer. Otherwise, it becomes a mishmash of copying this and copying that. It doesn't work. That identity is very important. Prasad is the most important thing. Otherwise, right. it's a commodity. If right. I could go to three stores and find the same Jadao necklace that's based on the Nizam, that okay. typical thing with the drops, one will say 15 lakhs, one will say 80 lakhs. I can't tell the difference. One will say two because Emeralds, Colombian. And who knows? True, true. You know? Coming from the you know uh, inventory management perspective, now what sort of turns does a fashion industry normally have? You know, in, what sort of what? Sorry, I didn't understand. Stock turns, you know, the, the number of times. Well, you, so that's the one thing I'm envious of you jewelers, that the gold and stones, always the price holds. Worst comes to you can melt it and redo it. Right. But in fashion, there's a lot of obsolescence. Someone might try something, lipstick gets on it, you can't sell it. Yeah. People are aware of what's new fashion. So now we've had this lockdown, right, for March and April. Right. Because by March, people had stopped coming to the stores because everything was getting cancelled. We understood by the 10th of 15, there's some garbar because all the NRIs had cancelled, all the weddings we had booked clothes for, they kept, right. they messaged and said, please put it on hold, we'll take it later, or can we take a refund and get something else? So, now, the stores have hung, the clothes have hung in that store for March and April. Right. A lot of them are white and cream. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, there's it's only so much I can, I have to, I have to get rid of it. I mean, I have these clothes I have to sell by June because there's the next fresh lot coming in, right? right. Clothes is a little different. With jewelry, I can send it back to be polished. I can't send whites back. Right. They have to go when they're new and they're current in people's heads. So we will probably do some kind of promotion because we also try to help all the craftsmen. So give a percentage and do a bit of a sale so we can keep all the workshops running because what's happened now is unprecedented. But I imagine if you're a jeweler, even if you sold nothing, there's an intrinsic value to what your metals and stones have. I mean, right. you might have made a lot in making, and I know some of the making is extremely expensive. I've seen some exquisite workmanship, and now the jewelers bring the backs of necklaces and all. But you know, if it's a beautiful piece, there's always a mark. Someone will come in for it when it picks up. Sure. We, we work more in numbers. You all may work in more special pieces. 
But like everybody, like Van Cleef and Arpel, they have the global youth. I can't tell you how many women I see wearing it on a gold chain now. Right. So I think all jewelers need to have, unless you're at that Vira and Bhaga level, where even I think he's doing it, where you have your, your principle, your, your marquee, the most exquisite pieces. That right. defines you. But then even Cartier will do little bands. And that's what they'll sell. Or they'll do simple watches, you know. You can buy it in silver, you can buy it in gold, you can buy it in rose gold, you can put it in diamonds. That's what then people buy. That's the aspiration. They're buying the quality, but they're not paying, you know, half a million dollars. And they feel good about it. People always like that. That will always do well. So that Chanel bag, you can get a quilted bag for $200, but many women will spend two and a half thousand dollars to get the quilted bag with the double C. Because they also feel it's an investment in quality and they like to, people like to buy things that make themselves feel special. No one feels special when you buy a copy. You know it's a copy. Sure. Right? Yeah. You're short changing yourself. Tell her, okay, you know, yeah. I'm right. So that's a tacky nouveau mentality. True. If you're someone who values yourself in quality, then you'll buy less and you'll buy, you know, as Minal Modi said to me, I don't need a logo. When I put my hand in, I know whether that's quality or not. That's okay. the real quality buyer. I'll that, tell that somebody, is, you know, the jewelry is all poking. They said, no, no, it doesn't matter. Fabulous design. I said, no. For a woman, what it feels like on her skin, that's cool. equally important. Yeah. In fact, you know, I mean, that's, that's another big difference between fashion and uh, jewelry is, is commanding a premium on a brand or commanding a premium on, on the price. So how is the pricing done? Is it cost plus? Is it value minus? No, and no, how do always... you maintain the MRP? Because in our industry, MRP is not going on. So how is it possible? What do you suggestion? Denge? But I, I've never understood why that's so in jewelry. Either they don't have a price tag or they have something in some code which they have to read and calculate. I don't know if it's for the income tax or the GST. I've never understood. <laughs> but obviously, there's some chakkar. <laughs> no, so, it's, it's if you go to Tanishq, consumer... it's, Tanish, it's a straightforward price. I, also because gold prices vary, so you'll have to calculate it on that. Correct. Yeah, I understand that. Yes. But and saying, also the breakup. Because consumers always ask us to break up. Yeah, 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 gold yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you see, it's much more hai. difficult. It's much more difficult. Right. To get that premium pricing when you're breaking down the ingredients, right. Right? right? If you go to a restaurant, if you go to a fancy restaurant at the Leela, and they say this is 10,000 rupees, you ask them for the ingredients, what are they going to say? It might be 1,000 rupees to make that pizza, right? It doesn't work like that. Right. So again, to go back to that kind of premium pricing, whatever at whatever level, you've got to offer something unique. Because if 10 people have it down the road, it's a commodity, Prasad. Correct. It's not the same. Or then, I was at Tanishk and I was looking at the diamond bangles, which are beautifully made and they also do cluster diamonds. You put four diamonds together so it looks like one. You know, that's uh, whatever they call the technique. And they were beautifully made. And I was shocked at how well-priced they were. They were like nine lakhs. And I was like, wow. Because half the time I asked these women, they're like, you know, eight crore kilo, whatever. But this looked really, they were beautifully made and they were you know, they, they were extremely well priced. So right. then it didn't matter. It wasn't commoditized. It was fair. So in your perception game, people either have to see it as very fair or they have to see it as... So we did a big uh, web seminar two days back with Singapore with this brand company that sells us. And one of the comments that I liked very much from this woman was that it's right, when you buy Tarun, it's like buying an investment because I will wear the pieces 20 years from now. They don't go out of fashion and the quality is such. So she right. will pay what is a premium because she knows she's not going to wear it for one season and throw it like if it was Zara. So these are things that you earn with customers. You know, okay. it's a perception game. PR helps you. But customers are getting smarter and smarter because there's so much information. Um, of course, celebrity endorsements helps. But I don't think it sustains in the long run. Finally, the engagement of your product has to sustain and make somebody love it. I don't care who's wearing Prada shoes, but if I put on Prada shoes, it feels so good. I don't, I don't give a damn who's wearing it. That's uh, right. So, you know, I'll go back to them. So in that same way, well, till I saw the body bag video, I don't know if I, that was, I don't know if you've seen that two days back. I may not after that. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, see, yeah. that's the danger with social media, too much information. Yes. And suddenly you're like, wait, they didn't, maybe they didn't think about it unless that's a spoof. Okay. So, I think these are all important things. 
that that that's and true. Think now engagement is very important. So when you launch new things, stop and tell the story. You know they have that Vogue wedding show where a lot of jewelers come because right. people come there. I don't know what will happen this year. And somebody like Raj Mehtaani comes, Satram Dalam uh, uh, from Calcutta, and he yeah. has very big, beautiful. It's unique and bobbly, and, and he sits there and he engages with people, and he does very well. But there are many jewels in the show, but his jewelry has a look, right? A fingerprint that comes out of his hand, right? And that's what people come back for. So okay. my biggest advice to all the big manufacturers, you know, you know, you might be doing this as a commodity, as a great export business. You might be cutting millions of stones, but to establish that brand, right? Over time, you got to develop a fingerprint that becomes the brand's DNA and builds on it. Not that it will be the same; it will change. Right. But you know, like you can you can tell a Bulgari, you could tell a Van Cleef, you know, that sort of thing. You must right. be able to develop, and we all have some good collections. We have some bad collections, some hits, some you know. That's sure. part of the course, part of the course. So, so coming to you know uh, collaboration between uh, the fashion world and the and the jewelry world. Now, if if there is a collaboration that we want to have with the designer, now what exactly would designer be looking for for this kind of a collaboration from his perspective? What what sort of qualities are they going to look for with the retailer? Well, you know, the thing is, it, it, it will depend from designer to designer. So a designer who's more funky might sure. want something more, a little more funky and therefore might work with a lower grade stone. I think the one area where designers will have problem where you all don't need the designers, if I might say so, is diamonds. Because in diamonds, people tend to wear more classic designs. And a lot of people will tell me openly, Are, ye to, who's the big thing? Um, the big Middle Eastern jewel, I mean, the one they do this, the bibs of diamonds. Not, the name is escaping me right now. Mawad. Uh, huh? Mawad. No, no. Mawad, that's all the beautiful stones. One of those other brands, they advertise a lot okay. uh, in the Wall Street Journal and all. Um, it'll come to me. I so, know you know, they, uh, it's not even jars. So many of these names, they just do a lot of square and diamonds and big bibs. So a lot of people just say we're wearing that design. So the they take the book and they get it made and there are wonderful jewelers and site holders in Bombay who will make it beautifully. So yeah. for that, you don't need any designer. They're the designers. They, they, a lot of this, uh, diamond jewelry worn here is replicated designs from the top jewelers abroad from what I've seen. Okay. So what you needed is in a mix of stones and colors and jadao and enamel and novelty stones and pearls, you know, Multicolor things that's so Indian and, 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 and contemporary versions that goes with Indian clothes but can also be worn with a black dress or whatever, you know. I think that sort of thing. Or more rose cards and the duller things, but big. There's no point with designers being tiny, tiny little things. Again, you yeah. won't have that impact that you can sell on your own. You understand? Okay. The one very interesting, uh, you know, a question which uh, one of the retailers had asked uh, was about, you know, you have done many collaborations with jewelry uh, companies, especially with Swarovski. You have been working quite closely, and with many other jewelry industries. So normally, what are the commercial terms that one needs to discuss while getting into this? Well, you know, the thing is, you know, we've done many things in different ways, and we were going to have a very big collaboration with that. Everything's been pushed back right now because of what's happened. You know, everyone wants to yeah. see what's happening with the markets. I think one really has to do this based on a projection. I mean, we worked, you and I did one thing, but the problem is because it was silver, putting it in the real jewelry stores, Correct. it was competing with the real jewelry. And my sister still has some of those necklaces. She could be wearing them at different weddings. Sure. In fact, I have one on the phone. I would have flashed it. But, and people come back, where is that? And say, my God. When it was in the stores, you know, so yeah. I think people want precious and, you know, not to get into costume. It should be right. precious, semi-precious and precious. I think it should be things that are a bit scalable. So right. you should be able to make copies of it because that's fine. No one's going to come to the designer for that one of a kind piece. They should be dramatic and bold because people want that from designers. And that's when you go into the bridal week and the couture week and the jewelry right. gets shown. It's shown as a look. People will sure. buy a look more and more. A customer will ring from LA and she'll say, I want the necklace with the lehenga. 
that's how we have to sell more and more right it's sure. part of an entire look okay there will also be people who come in to buy it individually and so it depends i know that with real uh, gold and diamonds the margins are much lower because the spread is much lower we know that yeah but the idea is to develop a look even if it takes a year don't rush into it and develop some kind of an interesting identity so people can see it and identify okay that's the key okay. i'm telling you that's the key other is your commodity uh, you know and then you can mix it with normal jewelry and then you 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 like it with all pricing and merchandising the things right. that are more special or are difficult to replicate or you can't do more of they can okay. command more of premium but no coming to you that, know sorry so i'd say that i'm not talking about diamonds because i know diamonds does not have that yeah. but with jarao and stuff you know and kundan i'd say most designers would work on i'd say 10 to 15% you know net and you know be collaborate with a lot of time but they have to give design and overseeing or make the prototypes it's not you know just to take jewelry from someone and put it there it's right. not going to work okay just uh, you know post covid now coming to that is is how, you know a lot of research companies have shown that the biggest hit is going to be the luxury industry which includes fashion industry as well as the uh, jewelry industry so what changes do you see are likely well, to happen so so let's take us skills in india okay first of all there'll be no nris to come in for six months i mean because europe's closing their borders right i don't think for a long time people are going to fly from america because america is the epicenter and people are very nervous it spread on planes and you're in a trapped environment and there's too much information it goes to the, the if you sneeze it can go through the air conditioning all that everyone's nervous so there's a there's a global i don't even think it's a recession i think it's a depression i think we're going to be very unpleasantly surprised in two weeks and i don't think even our governments really understand the ramifications of such a long lockdown and how to restart it i mean clearly no one does right but the other thing is that our clothes and our jewelry is worn in special occasions and it's sorry i can't hear you the sound uh, yeah the sound has been uh, yeah somebody has muted it uh, only he can mute it okay tarun we can't hear can you hear yeah yeah it's been muted okay yeah, yeah. okay yeah right. now it's okay yeah so basically what the problem is is that you know people will still buy small things or solitaires and birthdays whatever anniversaries but for the wedding which is what fuel the whole thing for big jewelry and for really high fashion that's going to be very pared down it's probably won't be allowed or it'll be 20 people but they'll still buy nice things but there won't be the 10 parties and the 10 events both because of the economic condition and because frankly no one wants to risk it you know now that they've seen what happens actually this is all highly exaggerated compared to you know what really happens but now it's people have got the fear psychosis sure so people will buy less but they'll buy better i think they'll buy more quality they'll buy less we have okay. to all brace down for a contraction we have to be realistic there's right. no way you, you know we did last we've lost already two months so brace be prepared you know cut your expenses so you can you know and then little pick so and right. then when it picks up there'll be fewer people left i think but, so. but do you think people will start buying much lesser and upper range than the higher end i think that the people with money are going to buy what they always bought but they are not going to buy for five functions they're going to buy for one or two okay. they'll have one small dinner they'll have one i mean if my son gets married it'll have to be the two immediate families and you know we can't do anything till this over that's right okay i mean we're, we're not going to it go i don't want the i i don't want the thing that someone came here and then they they look at the tracking they're doing which is a very good thing then right. there was some waiter from the catering company and someone got it sorry yeah you'll please get married and when this is done and done we'll have to be rocking you know? <laughs> true i think true. we have to be practical we also have to be responsible na no? sure. i remember the wedding that took place day before devi gaura's son or whatever national yeah. news day and night we will all be victims it's not it's not the thing to do it's too contagious it so is. we have to hang in there we have to ride it look we've survived the world has survived many things prasad this is one more blip and the, you know the vaccine the moment that vaccine is out 
everybody is going to be out rocking. But we have serious problems in this country. We have to ride it through, and a lot of people are going to get burnt and sink in fashion too. Right. I don't know about jewelry. With jewelry, I keep saying, as long as you don't have debt, your intrinsic value stays. Yeah, that, that's a big advantage. Jewelry, in six months, they worth nothing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, we just got about 10 minutes left, so let's throw it open to the audience. So, Ashok Bhai, can you take over? Yes, I can uh, say one thing, Tarun. Ah. Uh, you have an extremely positive mind. And you are, uh, with your experience, with your experience and your, your knowledge about things, about life in itself, the way you have put up things is phenomenal, absolutely. Thank we you have so really much. enjoyed every single word you have spoken we live to we live to learn every day i mean that's the fun of our lives you know and uh, uh, we were a little clueless about how this whole session would go but we never expected to go so well and uh, well and I, I i'm going to follow up it's my word to you i'm going to write a long email to the fdci i'll put it on uh, to uh, you know uh, him and he will send it to all of you and let's get that dialogue going let's see what happens Yes, Maybe so. I think so. a collaboration is 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 good for the both the industries together. Uh, yeah, there is always there is a great future ahead for all of us. Uh, we know we are going through a slow period, and we are going to go again for a little longer time for a slower time. But life doesn't end here. No. There is always a light at the end of the tunnel, and let's look at it in a positive manner. And use this time to rethink what we're doing, why we're doing it. I'm really using this time. I don't like a lot of things you're doing. We're changing our whole thing and we're changing our commitment to craft. So everyone has to do some soul searching at this time. We've been given the time to do it. Use it. Avinashi, any questions that uh, people uh, have asked yeah. on the chat? Uh, there are two, yes, three questions, questions which are, up. Tarun, there are yeah. two, three questions which are uh, important uh, for the gem and jewelry industry. Uh, yeah. As uh, there is a common trend in fashion uh, to change trend every three months or six months, uh, do you feel there is an opportunity for the gem and jewelry industry to change trends at least a year? You know, I think I think the gem and jewelry industry, from my limited understanding, this this change every three months happens in fast fashion, and it's not really the style of Indians to change so much. We still, we value things of heritage, you know. I think with jewelry, if it changed so fast, the trend, then people would buy less and less quality. I think there's a better uh, business to be had, at least at the uh, luxury level, for selling finer things, beautifully made with better stones. Because if you get into that cheaper stuff, it will just become cheaper, 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 and it'll become a commodity again, you know. So I think fashion is one thing, and fine jewelry is something else, which can use fashion but never confuse it with fashion. It's not to have that life cycle. When I buy something expensive and beautiful, I should say my granddaughter will have it. I, I don't say that with anything in clothes. Great. There's a big difference. Great. Uh, one more question. When we talk about uh, fashion uh, going with jewelry, uh, yeah. people, people in uh, metros, especially Delhi, Bombay, or uh, any uh, big metro, people will connect very fast. Uh, do you think yes. that goes in tier two and tier three cities also? Well, I think tier two and tier three cities are looking at tier one and tier two. It's aspirational. Also, the to be like tier one and tier two. And now social media. So you know how t television made us some audience. Wherever you go in America, they all speak the same way because of TV. Now you see it in India. You go to South India because of TV. Social media is making us more and more homogenous. And basically, the reason why I think with designers, so when we sketch, I'm holding up a sketch and it happened to be here. This is a thing of a piece of jewelry that will sit on this thing. Now, I can do it in embroidery, but I can also have a real piece that will sit like that and sell it to a special client. So there's a big synergy already in the way we're drawing it. You know? Great. And because we have to shoot the clothes, if we are designing the jewelry and the whole look, then when we shoot it, we shoot something unique instead of me borrowing jewelry at the last minute from somebody. And that becomes the self-perpetuating marketing cycle. Great, great insight. Uh, the, uh, one Mr. Chandra Surana is there from Huramal Rajmal Surana. He wants to yeah. uh, ask a question. Uh, Chandra Bhai, uh, you can uh, ask the question. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you so much, Tarun. Amazing. My talk. pleasure. 
amazing talk. I just wanted to get uh, insight from you that if you have made your signature or fingerprint, as you said, and when you find everybody following the similar kind of thing, how do you move? Because in jewelry, we don't change our things so fast. So what is your well, suggestion and guidance to keep it continuous where you don't leave what you have been doing and you don't want other people to get following it too much? So, so you'll keep evolving it. You'll change motifs. You can change colors. I, I'm talking about clothes. Uh, a, a very The collection that did very well last year for us was called Khashida. It's very fine colors, hand painted, and then we work in Ari work. So if I again swivel the phone, up on that wall are all the new paintings. I don't know mm -hmm. if you can see them. And yeah. those will go to the new Khashida collection. So, you know, a lot of us, sorry, I've lost this damn thing, sorry. We can hear you, but we can hear okay, you. So, okay, fine, anyway. So a lot of us have come into, you know, what drives us is we want to go to work and create the new thing. What we are missing is the, the desire to make that bigger business. So it's a combination of two things. If you're the business person, get your designer to do it. Designers come to work to create the new thing and it's slowly by evolution. So if everyone's copying this, move to the next thing because then you're also giving your new customer, your old customer who's your biggest base, a chance to buy something new. Others, they'll say, I've seen this, I've seen this, I've seen this. So you have to keep moving. Innovation is important. It's absolutely thing. You keep your classics. We still have Lengas from five years back that we call the classics. And they're for people who are coming new, who've not seen it, who've not worn it. They might go for that. But I can't tell somebody from the Ambani's or this or that who are up to date everything. They'll say, this is old. We want to only see what's new. So there are different things in your collection for different people. It's fine. You keep Hello. the classics, but you keep inventing. No, fabulous, fabulous for showing your heart. You showed your wall. Just simply like yeah. your heart and your creation. And yeah. thank you, DJC, for My this pleasure. amazing initiatives taken. I hope thank we meet so sometime. Much. Take care. Thank you. Uh, yeah, next. Uh, Tarun, uh, Tarun, one more question, uh, which is uh, really difficult for me uh, actually to pose to you. Uh, what uh, level of confidence uh, do you find in customers coming uh, to designer boutiques uh, when they uh, buy jewelry from a fashion designer? What level of confidence? Okay. Yeah. So it all depends on the person standing behind the counter. Uh, so very often, so sometimes, let me give you an example that we were doing a family's very beautiful clothes. And they, I think, I think that jewelry was coming from Raniwala. Okay, we didn't have jewelry of this size. So this man arrived with a suitcase. And as we held the clothes up, they pulled out thing and they wanted to take my advice. What should they buy? And these were big sets. So as long as they could speak to the person at the desk or the owner to be reassured of the quality, they were fine. There was no problem. So much depends on the person who's explaining it to you and say, listen, this. When you sell big jewelry to people, right? If you tell me it's 30 carats, it's that, whatever, you can't always go in very high fashion jewelry or I mean high quality jewelry. It can't go by the breakup of pure weight. I mean, there's something for the design or the rarity of the stones. If you say this is 60,000 a carat, I mean, who am I to argue whether it's 60 or 40,000? There's no way I know. So I have to love the design, but I have to feel that this person is selling something authentic to me. They also have an idea what prices should be because they're all in the market. And also, some jewelers will say that, listen, don't worry. If you know you change your mind, there's a 10 or 15% buy-by guarantee up to two years. So people feel reassured. It's okay. So uh, do you I think... Mean, that you have to connect. So let's say if, you're, if I'm selling your jewelry, I have my collaboration with you. And I'll say, look, here's you know, Mr. Gupta and he's the jeweler. And so... His man is standing here who knows all the technical things we are pressing. Most of the time when you go to stores, it's not like the owner sitting there unless it's a single store piece, you know. Then it's different. They're sitting there and selling. And that is very effective. But that's not how you build a big business in multiple locations. That's, a, that's one model. So, so uh, uh, with your uh, thing, uh, that means uh, people uh, uh, look for a buyback guarantee when they come to uh, the designers no, also? No, 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 they don't. Different jewelers have different means. So okay. in the beginning, sometimes they'll do that. 
for the first 15, 20, just to create that confidence. You know, because everyone talks, right? No one's ever come back to you by, by these fat. Also, if they're coming into a store, when you walk into a store, if you feel the store, the overall, let's say the philosophy, the, you know, the, the value system that the people in that store are imparting, the designer, if that's honest, then you expect honest, you know, you, you expect that even the jewelry will be looked at in the same thing. If you, if there's an assurance of some kind. There was a very, you know, a very smart lady and, you know, husband runs a very big company, won't take names. And for 10 years, she bought very beautiful jewels from this one guy, just her jadao. Everything was paid for by check and she was going abroad. She sent two necklaces to be insured and all the diamonds turned out to be paste, right? This is someone she had bought with over years and super high-end budgets, fabulous. So she had him thrown to jail. So that makes people nervous. You understand? Even having that relationship, how do you give people that assurance? So, you know, if you sit with a certain jeweler who is saying this, no one asks XY jewelers, how many tola, what is the size of diamonds? It's all cut and shaped. They're in love with the design. You know, even when I sell something, if I might be selling a Lenga for 14 lakhs, it's not that I so my assistants are selling it, but they have to know, like once a woman came and she said that, you know, I find the color a bit off. This feels like there's some black in the red and we're superstitious. Show me the swatch, we got the swatch. And I said, you know what? I just told them, applicate the work. Let her not go unhappy. It's not a big deal. It'll cost me another 80,000. I'll reuse the embroidery. You must leave people feeling happy. After that, for years, she sent people to me. So that's also how you build it, you know, and with you jewelers more so. Great. Uh, Bachraji, do you have any uh, uh, question to ask? Uh, I think Varuna has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm just... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I see a minute. I have a lot of questions. Thay. लेकिन मैं मुझे लगता है कि जितने क्वेश्चंस हैं मैं खोलूंगा तो मुझे तरुण जी का एक दो सेशन और लेना पड़ेगा। We can we will do that another day। हाँ we 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 will do another day। बस नथिंग काफी कुछ है जो कुछ का मैं ये क्वेश्चन पूछने से पहले ही कुछ आंसर शॉर्ट में मिल गया है लेकिन डिटेल में बात करना चाहते थे। so maybe not or no not today because we are already running out of time. So yeah. some, some other day we will uh, connect again. And, Is uh, any day going to meet you, Patra Ji? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, 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 of course. Thank you very I, much. I will send her that email today or tomorrow by the latest, okay? No, your sure. positive, positiveness, which you thought that jeweler or fashion designer we can do something with each other, this is a very positive outcome today. And uh, I am very optimistic about it. Because, you, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but remember, it's when the people are buying beautiful clothes for weddings, they don't want costume jewelry. They want yeah. the whole thing, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, we're selling belts to put over the veil for 45,000. It's made in Swarovski. Why not do real beautiful things? So, there's a big market. But the thing is, now everyone has to understand the needs and create for that. Correct. Um, Varuna, so, we Varuna should meet again. I have to, I've got another thing. It was lovely talking to you and we shall meet soon and I'll try and send out this letter tomorrow. Uh, sure, sure. Right. Perfect. I think I'll uh, wait for it. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, there's one more question coming okay. in. Okay. Uh, Varuna, Varuna wants to ask a question, I think. Varuna? Yeah. Go on. Go ahead. Varuna, I have already unmuted you. I think we have lost her. Okay. Uh, uh, then Ashok, by over to yes. you. Yeah. Yeah, we have uh, Sumit who is going to do the vote of thanks. If you can, Sumit. Sumit, bye. Hello, sir. With Hello. pleasure. So, uh, Mr. Tarun Tailani, uh, it was wonderful uh, listening to you. You are a wonderful man, and the day was very, very, very positive for us. Uh, and knowing a person like you, who's so easy and who's so so practical. And you have shared amazing things to us. And I felt like, you know, you say it and you just learn it and you learn it. You will 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 learn it. And with the same way, you have understood us all. We are very grateful to you, sir. 
and thank you so much thank you and we wish ke aap again and again hamari industry ke sath jude mind speak ke sath aur achhi cheeze share kare matlab i know ke aapke paas bahut bada treasure hai humko sab ko sikhane ke liye mujhe to aisa lag raha tha ki you know a mentor like you and, and aap shayad do teen jewelers ko apne sath agar ek din bitane ka mauka kabhi de to hamara to matlab you know we can do a lot of things in our lives whenever you come to delhi standing invitation Thank, so you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the Thank generosity, you. Tarun. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank very much. You. Uh, Thank you, Tarun. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. For for all of us, uh, we have tomorrow a wonderful session coming in. Uh, gold, the changing scenario. Do join us all at two p.m. sharp. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you Prasad. Thank you, Prasad. Thank you, Prasad, Thank you, Prasad for a you. wonderful uh, yeah. session. You did a. You I was so much. You were on the dot. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Loved it. Great. Sure. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks Bye. a lot. Thanks a lot. See you guys.